going to move uh, number eight on the agenda up to the top so we can recognize our color guard tonight and if they would like to leave when they're done they're more than welcome to. Dr. Steinholt. Thank you Mr. Armour. Uh, really really very pleased to recognize <coughs> student excellence anytime that we see that in place in our school district and at the end of the fall season uh, the board had asked that we bring forth our fantastic Sun Valley color guard uh, to recognize them formally at a meeting of the Pendelco Board of School Directors. Uh, what I had asked Mr. Rafferty to share some background about the fantastic work of this group. And he shared with me that the Sun Valley Color Guard has been a major part of the Sun Valley Marching Band success throughout the years. Using dance and flag work, this is the group that helps tell the story while the musicians play. The group practices in conjunction with the marching band and attends all performances and events that they do as well. This is a group that works hard, that works together, and that works selflessly to be visually stunning with their work, their performance, and dance. Led by the coaches Colin Burns and Eileen Pry, they work in conjunction to collaborate with Mr. Pry and the band to create the support needed to visually create the effects that move the story of the show through costuming to flags and equipment to interaction with the musical members during the program. For the past two years, Sun Valley Color Guard has earned the title of High Color Guard at the Cavalcade of Bands Championships. The award is given to the Color Guard that performs the best at championships within a specific criteria set on score sheets. Criteria include difficulty of the work, achievement level of that work and adherence to the character that the performers are portraying. Uh, many of us here tonight have seen them at the events out on our stadium field. I have seen our marching band and our color guard, color guard on very, very hot days before the school year begins out there putting in the hours, toiling, so that in the end they, they can deliver the impressive performances that we have all seen. No, it's not much, but the board did want to present certificates of achievement and recognition to all of you, and I'm going to ask Mr. Fry to help me hand those out. We'll call your name and we'll have you come up front, and then we would like a group photo. Please, a round of applause for the Sun Valley Public Service. Skylar Anderson. Sierra Cooney is not with us tonight, but we'll still be here. We have Sam Fry. Dakota Herman. Uh, we have his sister, Skylar Herman, who's not with us tonight, but we'll give that to you. Um, we have Sean Hoey. We have Alyssa Kugelman. Nina Lillis. And we have 
have Hannah Murray. And last but certainly not least, we have Grace Zimmerman. I will. And as Dr. Steinhoff said, uh, Mrs. Pry and Colin Burns, you're part of this. Tonight I would like to ask Dr. Stein off in the administration to put together a um, solid fiscal plan for the uh, starting a full day kindergarten um, as well as the implementation of it uh, for the February board meeting uh, at the study session. We will go over to the board, discuss the possibilities, figure out if it's financially feasible um, and if it can be pulled off before the start of the 2023 school year. If not, it's not off the table, but we need to make sure if it's something, first of all, we can financially uh, fund it as well as uh, get it going in the city. So. Sure, it'll be our pleasure. We, uh, we will bring a proposal back uh, before the board uh, for board consideration. I'm going to speak a little bit more tonight again um, about the general topic of full day kindergarten some of the barriers to entry, if you will, some of the opportunities as we've been discussing it you know, throughout the year. So happy to uh, share some more information again at the board tonight, but we'll uh, certainly understand that our team will come back with uh, a motion to be able to address and information for the board to be able to uh, make some final decisions in terms of uh, moving forward on this topic. Sure. That's good. start off for Thank you, Mr. Armour. Uh, it's, it's always uh, my pleasure as a uh, representative of the school district and the employees of the school district to uh, just at least acknowledge that January is the National School District Re School Director Recognition Month, and this is spearheaded by the Pennsylvania School Boards Association. It gives us an opportunity uh, every every year, at least, to remind the public uh, that the work of our elected representatives on the school board is volunteer work. Um, school directors, as PSBA notes, are a vital segment of every community. You contribute countless volunteer hours, you fulfill your school-related responsibilities and duties, you are committed individuals who serve the district, and you serve out the best that you have to give for the good of our staff and our students. PSBA affirms that January should be a time, once a year at least, to recognize your work and to show their appreciation. The public honors your service. And we want to support you and salute you throughout this month. Just some facts, there are 4,500 school directors who serve Pennsylvania's 500 public school districts. All boards have nine members. School director elections are held every two years on a 5-4 rotation to ensure continuity. School directors are elected locally. However, the state constitution delegates to them the responsibility to administer the school system actually as agents of the General Assembly. You serve as volunteers without any compensation or pay. More than three quarters of school directors are post-secondary graduates. The percentage of female school directors continues to increase, which is good to see. Forty-three percent in the year 2022. Twenty percent of Pennsylvania school directors have more than ten years experience. 60% of all districts involve students at their local school board meetings. Good to have you back, Seamus and Sophia, again. 40% of school directors attended the schools in the districts where they serve, and 94% have children or had children who attended the school district. So I thank you for your service. I do have another Pendelco Proud t-shirt for all of you as a small token, and it was important that we bring it and recognize, again, on behalf of Pendelco School District, thank you for the work that you do up here every month on behalf of our students. Appreciate it. Thank you, Carson. The um, Sun Valley High School course catalog is listed as an item for board information. Um, that course catalog, the link to that, so that you can see it has been sent directly to you, which you received today. 
I will let Dr. Kamenka mention some items about kind of the uh, some, some of the new approaches that they're looking to take with some of the spirit and energy that we see at the high school. Dr. Kamenka. So, thank you, Dr. Steinoff. Yes, yeah, so the Sun Valley Course cat Selection Guide is ready, so if you don't have to worry about this this year, I don't think, right? You're moving on to uh, other course catalogs, correct? Um, but the, it is ready. Uh, Principal Roscos and his team have worked really hard on this document. Actually, it is, has a whole new look, new professional look. Um, it also has the on the cover, I belong here. And he can, Principal Roscos continues to promote uh, that student connection to Sun Valley High School, and that, that is on our cover. So when you all have a chance, chance and you did receive that. So you can take a look at that catalog, the professional look that it has. And I want to thank Principal Roscoe's, the counselors, um, the teachers, all the departments. They really worked hard sifting through this document to look at things that were not necessary or are necessary to improve transparency, communication, and process. So all the questions that somebody at high school would often get, whether it's the guidance counsel department or teachers, they really try to put a lot of information here. Um, ended up being quite large, not as big as some, but you know about 87 pages. So that's why they have shifted to a Google Doc format, so that would be more of a link and it won't be a hard copy. I do have one here. Um, we could be happy to pass around so you all can take a look. Uh, again, all the departments did look through their course um, descriptions uh, to make them, I would say, more clear, enticing to students and actually to detail what the experienced students will have when they sign up for these courses. So they definitely did a lot of work there. We have our new courses that I spoke about last uh, week uh, in there. Uh, the, the STEM courses, we continue to build up STEM courses in that area um, as well. We're starting to expand our dual enrollment, dual credit opportunities, so that information is all detailed in there as um, it's also required by PDE as well, so we have to make sure that is in there. <coughs> Timeline, it's, it's going to be starting to be pushed out this month. Um, students will have uh, visits from the counselors in the classrooms uh, about mid-February to actually, the counselors will start to assist the um, students with filling out that course catalog. And then early March, we're expecting a, um, the catalogs to be submitted for students so we can start planning on our schedules. And, um, yeah, that's all I have at this point. If any questions for me on that um, regarding the catalog? I know this is um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's an, a lot of work that goes into this. It's for, it seems early in the year, but if we're going to get to scheduling and staffing and, and communicating this information out, it's it's a process. So I'm glad the high school came through and got this ready for us for January. So I'm just give them a credit, a big shout out. Thank you, Dr. Kamek. I'd like to uh, thank the administration for the work that you're doing for dual enrollment. I'm um, trying to get a more uh, acquainted with our district and get some more of our students in the upper grades and college credits while they're still working through high school. It's a lot of work, and we appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. One step at, we're taking one step at a time, but thank you. Appreciate thank you. <coughs> 2.01 is approval of minutes. Motion number one is to approve the minutes of the November 16th, 2022 board meeting. Second. Questions or comments? Those in favor? Uh, opposed? Motion passes. Uh, motion number two is to approve the minutes of the special board meeting of December 5th, 2022. Do I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, number three is the approval of minute meeting of December 5th, 2022. Do I have a motion? Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 2.02 is the invoice listing. Motions to approve the invoice listing of December 2022 through January 2023. Do I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 2.03 is a treasurer's report. Mr. Zeldin, would you mind reading that for us? As of November 30th, 2022, Pendelco's balance was $52,109,024. During December 2022, local, state, and federal revenues totaled $3,145,314. Disbursements were issued in the amount of $8,815,443. As of December 31st, 2022, Pendelco's current balance is 
$138,895. The motion is to approve the treasurer's report for December 2022. Notice motion? Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 2.04 is a budget transfer report. Motion is to approve the budget transfer report for November and December 2022 and January of 2023. Vote discussion. Second. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Number three, student representatives report to them. Hello, it is great to be back. Um, <coughs> okay. On December 8th, the yearbook club took pictures for all clubs and activities. Students were called down club by club to have their pictures taken. It all went down very smoothly and the yearbook got all the pictures they needed to make a great addition for the end of the year. Uh, just before the new year rang in, the choir and band had their winter concerts. Both groups sounded great and a notable moment was the band with their holiday mashup. After a successful concert, the band and choir were then asked to perform for fifth graders from around the district who came to Sun Valley in the morning for a special concert. The Science National Honor Society has been a great help to the students of Sun Valley in need of science extra help. Now with new and old members, the Science National Honor Society has been offering tutoring sessions for anybody who needs help with their science work. The junior class has announced that this year's class trip will be to Williamsburg, Virginia. While in Williamsburg, students will go to both Bush Gardens and King's Dominion amuse amusement parks. It is going to be a very fun time and will be happening in early June. Just yesterday, the 8th grade had an informational meeting about their upcoming years at Sun Valley. At this meeting, the National Honor Society helped out by giving tours of Sun Valley to groups of 8th graders. With the tours, kids could ask questions, see the layout of their future school, and feel more comfortable with the upcoming transition that will happen next year. Recently, Sun Valley also hosted a debate competition in which the National Honor Society helped with. Students were asked to help direct competitors and judges to their rooms and assign locations. At the end of the competition, the National Honor Society also helped with cleaning up the cafeteria and other places. Finally, the yearly PMEA District Choir Festival happened on January 14th. This year, seven students from Sun Valley were selected to attend the festival, and this was the first in-person three-day festival that there had been since COVID-19. Students left Sun Valley around 3 o'clock on January 14th and made their way to Octorero High School, where they worked for many hours on perfecting eight pieces of music they prepared before the festival. The concert itself went great, and the regional choir festival is just around the corner in which four of the seven students that attended districts will be going. All right. Hello, everyone. It's great to be back. <coughs> Uh, since I have not seen you all since November, I want to say Happy New Year to you all. Um, to start things off, the National Honor Society held a clothing and toy drive where everything was donated to Nana's Attic, which helped provide for those who were domestic violence victims. Uh, we did this drive for about two to three weeks, and we drove bags there ourselves um, on December 9th and December 16th. We had so many donations that uh, they filled about three aisles in the back of the store to about the ceiling height just on the second week, which was pretty awesome. So it was a very successful drive. Um, the class of 2023 seniors have um, announced their annual field trip to Disney World, which will be from May 18th to the 22nd, and they're collecting money for that now. The Math Honor Society has started back up, and tutoring will be starting for that very soon. One of our math teachers, Mrs. Caputo, was very kind to step up and fill the role of a supervisor, and we know she's going to do a tremendous job. The Science National Honor Society had its induction on January 11th, which Seamus and I were both inducted into. Since the juniors and sophomores uh, last year who were in Science National Honor Society were not able to have an induction last year due to COVID, we were all officially inducted this year with a real ceremony, which she was very kind of. A couple of weeks ago, um, the, all of the AP Literature classes had the opportunity to speak with a panel of Sun Valley graduates who are now in college. The panel was made up of five students who ranged from freshmen to seniors in college, and we got to ask questions about things we desperately wanted to know. And surprisingly, food and the laundry system at colleges were the most <laughs> successful topics of our conversation. Uh, it was a very well put together panel and a very great experience, which we all enjoyed. The National Honor Society just had our winter formal this past Saturday, January 21st. It was a big hit. Um, we had a pretty good turnout of about 300 students, and it was wonderful to see everyone coming together to have a good time. Winter sports are also nearing an end soon, and spring sports athletes have already started to turn in their PIAA sports physicals, which will be collected until February 17th, and several teams have been using the weight room quite frequently to prepare for their upcoming season. This week is also midterm week for Sun Valley, and students have been working very hard to get the last of their grades in and to do well on their midterms themselves. 
The second marking period will end on Friday the 27th, and the third marking period will start on Monday the 30th. The students have been working very hard this year, and will continue to do so for the remainder of the year. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you. Nice to see you back. Appreciate your Number four tonight, there is no DCIU report. Ms. Essen, Ms. Powell's. Number five is Superintendent's report, Dr. Strunk. Thank you. I'll uh, pretend from here as well since I have to be in the way of the slide. <coughs> It's always difficult following Seamus and Sophia, who do such a wonderful job in their presentations, sharing great news. It's hard to top them. Pleased to uh, present my superintendent report for this month. <coughs> On the uh, agenda tonight, uh, we have the instructional calendar for next year. Uh, as we have been <coughs> directed, we will continue to put together a calendar that pretty much follows the traditions and expectations in this school district. Uh, this calendar will include 183 student days, 191 staff days. Uh, the first student day will continue to follow Labor Day. And as I've indicated, the school board uh, is of the belief that we should begin to start bringing the students back before Labor Day. It would be my recommendation that we gave at least uh, two years notice uh, to the community to do that, because that would be a significant change. But we are continuing to start school the day after Labor Day for students. Uh, of note, there was a very early spring break uh, in this calendar for next year. It will mean that uh, the run between April and May will be fairly significantly long, will be difficult. We have a number of teachers right here, fantastic teachers from Coburn and Parkside. Uh, they'll have to work their magic with some students during that long run. If we have a quiet winter, perhaps there will be the ability uh, to amend the calendar and find a, a holiday in that April-May time period. Uh, we are adding two additional early dismissals to the calendar that will uh, enable us to accommodate increased state required staff training hours. So last summer in the omnibus bill, school districts were told there were a number of new topics that teachers must be trained on, all staff must be trained on, and we have to find the hours to do that. And uh, many of those topics require annual training. So we have added additional early dismissals to accommodate uh, those uh, increased staff training hours. We still have enough hours to meet the 990 requirement, and we will still have enough days to meet the 180-day requirement. That enables us also to have three inclement weather days built into the calendar uh, for next year. Uh, this year we are moving forward with some changes to the residency re-verification process. Typically around this time, uh, parents would still be kind of uh, being begged to kind of bring out the documents that they need to prove residency re-verification. As the board knows, you've often heard from parents who maybe have five or six kids in the district and they've lived there forever, and they're like, do I really have to prove my residency? I'm the PTL president, for crying out loud. So there was a purpose in doing that, but we looked for a way that we thought would be much more efficient and less onerous on our families. You know, the new process will include less paperwork for families, less clerical support hours, less impact on students. We won't have to call students down after the deadline and say, sorry, your parents have to come pick you up. Sometimes that happened. Uh, now we will be using um, the clear batch system, which will look at a public record database and check that against the records that we have on hand. We'll be sending a letter out to parents informing <coughs> them of that. Essentially, it uses public records to help us understand um, what families perhaps may have students attending our schools who don't, in fact, live in our district. We believe, uh, based on our research with other school districts who have used that process, that it will be more effective uh, and less onerous than what we've gone through in the last couple of years. <coughs> Where are we at current snow days? You know, it's hard to think about snow, the kind of rain that's happening outside right now. Thankfully, it's not that cold, but we've used one of three days that we have built into the calendar. Flexible instruction days may be used once the inclement weather days are exhausted so that we don't have to make up days during spring break or during the summertime. And our plan is to send out flexible instruction day refreshments. You know, some people call this virtual learning days. So we will be sending out refreshers to our community, to our parents, as a reminder of what the schedule for those days would look like should they be required. But right now, um, it's looking like a, a fairly good winter for the next couple of weeks, so we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Our comprehensive plan would typically have been something that we would be working on right now. Um, however, last week, superintendents in Phase 1 school districts like us got a letter from the Pennsylvania Department of Education saying, 
put that on hold because they are changing the templates, they are changing the requirements, uh, they are changing everything about it. So Pendelco's multi-year comprehensive plan is now due October 31st, 2023. And we can't move forward until we find out what type of data uh, the, the state will be asking us to put in the comprehensive plans itself. Surveys, data review, that'll occur later this spring and through the summer months so that the board can consider the new multi-year comprehensive plan in the fall. It'll be due in October, I would imagine, that we'll have it approved by the board in September or October. So uh, the board has continued to ask us to kind of bring forward information about full day kindergarten, um, and I've been giving you some pieces about that. Um, I know the board has received some emails of advocacy for parents, and I've responded to some of those. As I always say, there is no philosophical objection to us offering full day K that I'm aware of. There's no kind of community will against it or um, majority will saying that you know we, we don't want to do full day. We commit to half day. So there's no philosophical objection to it. We don't need advocacy for it. Or we don't need to have our kind of minds made up. The issue has always been a purely financial one. Uh, primarily due to the low property taxes in Pandelco, our per pupil revenue, if you take all the revenue we get, we divide it by all the students, we generally receive $4,000 less per pupil than the county average. That is a big number that we have to accommodate for in efficiencies and doesn't permit us to do some of the things that we would easily do if we could, such as full day care. So the key cost driver, likely we would need five to seven additional full-time teaching staff, kindergarten staff, potentially expressive arts, uh, potentially special education teachers. Uh, we likely would have to provide this without transportation for at least the first year because of the lead time on additional busing that we would not be able to meet at this point in the calendar year. Uh, but parents are already driving their kids in and coming right back, you know, just a couple hours later, so they would understand that that's part of the process. You know, as expected, the research on full day kindergarten is generally positive. We wouldn't uh, argue with the research. Uh, the point generally comes out that it is not necessarily vast growth in academics that you see, but it is those other really important aspects of development that come through. The social emotional development, you know, the uh, executive functioning, the occupational skills, uh, speech and language development, all the other things that you can get by being participating in phys education, physical education, <coughs> art, music, and interacting on a recess playground, uh, doing science and social studies in a way that they don't currently have the time to do that right now. There are some of the advantages that we would see. Regional and local enrollment trends are, right, are favorable right now. Uh, if you look at the live birth data over the last decade, it has gone down every single year in Delaware County. So the ability to accommodate or consider it right now is very favorable. Half-day kindergarten remains the model of delivery in numerous districts throughout Pennsylvania and Delaware County. So it's not just Pendelco that offers half-day. It is commonly used right now. Um, logistical and space concerns are big, serious issues for some districts. Our principals who have been meeting on this topic weekly are telling us that is not a disqualifying barrier. You know, space is something that we could, have, we could find accommodations for it if, if the board decides to go in this direction. Uh, so to implement it, we would need a combination of increased revenue, a redirection of some expenses, and the use of some existing fund balance will be required. So for instance, if a school used to have four sections in one grade and suddenly has a drop in enrollment and now they only need three sections, rather than just not filling that position and the benefits accruing to the budget, we would then say that's a staff position that we now need to dedicate to kindergarten, right? So that's when we talk about redirection of some expenses that just enables us to kind of meet the middle with regard to more revenue, uh, lower expenses, and then having to borrow from fund balance. Full day K may lead to a reduction in remedial and other student support costs in future budgets. So for instance, rather than having a first or second grade teacher saying, I need to refer this student for um, occupational therapy or for speech and language services, it's possible that the full day K would have helped remediate some of those issues earlier and prevented them from um, appearing as needs in subsequent grades. So 
So it has the potential to recoup investment if it's strictly a budgetary decision. And a wild card here is that true cyber charter tuition reform, if, if, if it should ever happen, that would really provide meaningful relief for us because we are paying about as much in cyber charter tuition right now as we would need to run a full day K. So if we did not have that onerous expense, we would be able to run full day K with no con concerns or considerations about finances. Um, I just always want to show you some kind of facts, and I always ask for some charts. Uh, here are our neighboring districts. The blue ones do not offer full day K, the yellow ones do. Per student revenue, uh, Rose Tree Media, uh, just under $25,000 per student. You look at where Pandelco is at, we're just above $17,000. Uh, Wallen for Swap, Chichester Garden. So they have significantly more revenue, but not all of them are able to offer full day pay. That's the challenge. Per student expenditures, right? So how much can we spend? Um, Chichester uh, currently in 2021 spent the most per student. Rose Tree Media, Garnet, Wallenford, and then Pandelco. And you can see the limitations that we have on how much we can we can spend. The return on investment in this district is exceptionally good when you look at what we, what we spend. And that's why I'm always so proud of this staff with what they accomplish, because it means that they're giving their all to get the kind of outcomes that we get on the expenditures that we have. We spend every dollar that we have, and we have to drive revenue to be able to do that. This is just an example of where we sit in terms of total amount of expenses. Our district spends the least amount of money to run its district in any district in the county. That would be fine if we were the smallest district, but we are not the smallest district. Here are the trends in revenue. You'll see back in 2008, we were the blue line. We were pretty close to the green line. The green line represents total per pupil revenue in the county. And as you will see, the difference between the green and the blue line is growing because of Act 1. Because we are limited in the amount of taxes that we can raise, Districts with larger budgets who raise by the same percentage as us will generate more revenue. So in 2008, we had about $1,800 less revenue per pupil versus 2021 is about $4,000 difference. That's why we have to maximize revenue any way we can to ensure that if we overly focus on low property taxes, you will not be able to stop the, the growth in that gap that you can see over time. Here's our revenue. You'll see where we are in total revenue, still in the low end. Revenue per student, not the worst. This has improved uh, during my time here. I've been here long enough now where you can look at that. We're trying to drive revenue, to use it smartly, to use it wisely, to make sure that we have what we need to offer the programs that we want. This is the general fund expenditure per student again. So, other items for school board consideration, something the board wants to think about. Does our community need an additional year's notice for a change of this sort? Some might want it, some might want to weigh in, some might want more research. That's for the board to consider. Um, you know, if the board is set, determines that it's something that they want in place for September, you would make that happen. If the board says it's something they want in place for 2024 or further study, that's what we would accommodate as well. Can we be sure of a multi-year commitment to this change? If this is what we're going to do, we have to make sure that we don't pull it out, that we make that commitment and that commitment's going to stay. And then, will there be support for us using our ready-to-learn grant funds that come from the state solely towards funding full-day kindergarten? And that would help limit the impact on taxpayers as well as the local budget. So, any additional questions or comments around the full day kindergarten discussion for me or for Dr. Kamenko or anything that anyone like to weigh in on the board at this time? Full day cap? No. So just just okay. as the board would ask, that we get a solid number, a solid plan of, of so it's not five to seven, it's this is what it's going to cost us, mm -hmm. this is what we have, this is what our opportunities are, and, and then we need, we need to make a decision whether it's going to be possible for us to do that. You got it. Yep. We'll bring that to the board next month. Um, I want to point out that uh, in response to some feedback that we've got from parents about uh, the uh, difficulty sometimes of calling your child out sick, 
We have a new attendance reporting process that we are happy to implement. And because that's such an issue, we're not going to wait till September. We're going to bring that forward at this time. Uh, there's three ways now that parents will be able to report attendance. Uh, first is through an app that they can have on their phone. Just when they download the School Messenger mobile app, register to report absences via the app to be able to call, essentially notify the school that your child's going to be out sick by using the School Messenger app. Another way, right on the computer, be able to go to schoolmessenger.com, be able to report absences online. Or the third way, which is to call a dedicated number, and that will walk you through the information with number prompts, and you'll be able to also uh, notify the school that your child is out at that, uh, using that process. The new attendance process is going to begin February 6th. So what we will do to ensure that everyone is ready for this is kind of bombard our parents, if you will, with plenty of communication about this change and showing the highlights that will make the process so much easier for them. Um, we'll have uh, information on the web page under the attendance sheet. Uh, we'll do a voice shot. There will be video tutorials available. Uh, we will send home a high-level flyer with every student. We'll post information on social media. Articles will be in the school newsletters, and we will send an email. So all parents will be aware of this change. Um, the older system will remain in place if necessary, but we are promoting this new system. The other piece to this that I wanted to point out, very important in the process, is for parents to make sure that their contact information is accurate. So I know sometimes parents get a new phone line or they change their number or uh, they change an address and we don't get that information. They just forget to notify the school. Now parents can go right into Skyward and update that information. So we will be asking parents to check it, make sure it's correct, make sure it's accurate. If it is, no change is necessary. But any time they have that change, they can go in and make that change themselves without having to contact the school and have our office staff spending time trying to walk them through the process. Also, our text messaging system did work. We used it for our school closing announcement on December 23rd. Um, we're encouraging parents to use that as well. And we will remind parents you can uh, sign up for the text messaging for critical alerts at any time to go through that process. Happy that uh, our wrestling coaches are here. Well, probably not even aware, but we had already um, had planned to put a slide up tonight to congratulate head coach Tom Ellis and his assistant, uh, Mr. Barlow, on their 100th win. And what a win this was 61 to 9 over Ruston. That happened on January 11th. Uh, that his commitment to wrestling in a district for more than a decade has really, really been impressive. We are excited. They have a number two seed Friday night in the District 1 duels. Um, they're going to be hosting the number 15 seed, Central Buck South, um, on, uh, yes, as I said, Friday at 7 p.m. I uh, had saw some of their scores throughout the season and I asked Mr. Raff, like, what's going on? And he said, honestly, I think it's Coach Ellis. He just, he's been with the team for a long time. He's been building the program, and they're just that solid. So congratulations. Yeah. Yep, I know. They were expecting it, but um, keep up the great work. Core students, as Seamus had mentioned, congratulations to seven. This is a really big number. Seven Sundown students were chosen to perform at the Course Festival, and to have four of them move on is, is very, very impressive. You have the names there, Alexandra, Pat, Ryan, Avery, Seamus, Madison, Samantha. Uh, maybe some of the uh, teachers here taught some of those students, and there they are now, um, happy up in the picture, of, of having had that recognition. Uh, Sun Valley Course uh, really doing some impressive things in recent years, and we're just thrilled to see that they're doing so well and they're being recognized in the All-State competition. And then Alexa Bernstein, uh, you know, Northley has had many uh, countywide uh, <coughs> some that have even advanced to the Washington, D.C. level. There's something about that tradition at Northley, so we're keeping our fingers crossed uh, that uh, Alexa Bernstein, who uh, seventh grade at Northley, uh, will represent us as well as her predecessors, and she'll advance to County Spelling Bee in February. That's all I have at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stottle. Uh, announcements for the public tonight. The board met in executive session. Uh, to discuss personnel and litigation matters. Any comments by members of the board? Um, so 
So I have a couple of things that it's okay to, to bring up. I know it's been, I took a look, it was about six weeks since we met, so that's why we have a pretty much heavy agenda. So there was four things I wanted to call out related to the agenda out of the 18 items. Um, but even before that, I said, gosh, I took a look, this is 14, 14 years. And I know Lisa, I know sometimes it depends, but you've lasted the longest with me. Um, so if anything else, I don't give myself an award, so thanks for dealing with me for so many years on the school board. I know my wife will thank you too. Even my dad jokes, you know, you get them now. Um, but anyway, the four things on the agenda, I just wanted to release this. I'm, I'm excited that they're, that they're on there. Um, Dr. Steinhofer stole my thunder for the instructional, seeing the basics. But um, as far as for girls wrestling, how we, we have that on the agenda tonight, as well as far as for support and sponsorship, something that I know our wrestling program has been looking to it, as well as with our AD. So I'm very appreciative that we have our school district is, is going to be sponsoring girls wrestling. Um, and then also two, two contracts. One is he did bring this up for himself, um, but also the for the extension for Dr. Steinhoff for for a new term, as well as I'm going to be biased if there's a uh, contract for for a student that I actually I, I coached once upon a time um, about 15 15 years ago. I know this school uh, student teaching here at the high school. So out of the 18 agenda items, I know it's a very heavy agenda typically. In, September maybe or so, or October. Some of the months are a little bit lighter. This one's a pretty pretty heavy, pretty thick agenda. Um, we did have standing room only and so on. So I'm just, I'm just excited for some of the agenda items to get approved tonight. Thank you, Mr. Tinsley. Um, Comments by members of the public. Uh, this portion of the meeting is limited to agenda items only. Please make sure to state your name, address, and uh, agenda. Thank you. Uh, my name is Amy Coos, and I live at 2160 Arbor Lane uh, here in Aspen. I'm very excited to hear that um, you guys are going to continue to explore the full day kindergarten possibility. Um, one thing I would urge you to think about is transportation. I realize logistics of having enough buses to fit all those kids is a huge obstacle given timing, of course. Um, but when my older daughter started <coughs> kindergarten, all she wanted to do was ride that bus. And she was so crushed when she found out she could not. And now I have a third grader who loves the bus, same kid, and a kindergartner who would be very happy to ride the bus, but I have to drive her every day and getting two kids out the door at two different times. Because I'm not going to make the kid who likes the bus not ride the bus to go in the kindergarten door to then come back and pick her up. So I realize it is an obstacle, but if there could be the option or even a pilot program of kids with older siblings who are already riding the bus, they're riding the bus with a big brother or big sister might help ease that transition. And then down the line, all the kindergartners get to ride the bus. I hope you will consider the possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Pascal, I live on Lampost Lane. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone. Uh, I wrote a letter to Dr. Steinhoff, pronounce that right? Uh, and I received your response, and I, I really enjoyed everything that you had to say, and I got a better understanding of what was going on. But uh, about the full day kindergarten, um, I really would appreciate the consideration in it. Thank you. I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off. Is this an, is there an agenda item? Yes, this okay. is full day kindergarten. Uh, so that'll be at the end. I'm sorry, I should have started. Me. Oh. It's not actually on the agenda, it's just the way that our meeting is structured. We have to wait. I apologize. <laughs> You left me talk. I'm getting hollering. <laughs> but uh, you'll be more than welcome to come back as soon as we do our okay. agenda items. All right, I can. And then that's for public comment. Thank you. Sorry about that. 
He should have just had, kept on talking. Yeah. He's going to make his name for that one. That's all. Sorry about that. I'm impatient. That. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. We'll move on to the next. We're here all night. Um, so, number 10 starts on page 2. Goes through page 3, 4, 5, and 5. Six and ends on page seven. I will uh, note that a board member has asked the pool 10.01 A to be voted on separately. So uh, this motion will be for everything except for 10.01 A. Um, references to Pendaco budget 2022 through 2023, Act 93 plans, PDEA agreement. PDESPA agreement, PDSSPA agreement, the PA section school code 1108 is the administrative recommendation to approve all personnel items as presented. Do I have this motion? Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We'll now vote on 10.01A. Um, and we will do roll call. Consent agenda for 10.03 through 10.13, with the exception of 10.10 and 10.15. They need to be voted on separately. Um, if anybody wishes to have any of those pulled from the agenda, please speak now. I need a motion for 10.03 through 10.18, excluding 10.10 and 10.15. I'd like to uh, clarify on 10.12, statement of support and sponsorship for Sun Valley High School Girls Wrestling. The motion reads to approve the statement of support for the addition of Girls Wrestling as a sponsor of support at Sun Valley High School, as presented. Um, we will be removing beginning in the 23-24 school year. So we were told that that is not necessary. So on page 8 and 12 uh, would be the motion would be to approve the statement of support for the addition of girls wrestling as a sponsor support at Sun Valley High School as presented. Um, also for the edification of our group, we have a large group here tonight. Um, 1003, the Act 1 resolution indicates that Ken Delco's tax rate index of 5% cannot be exceeded. So tonight the board is essentially approving a resolution indicating that while we acknowledge that our tax rate index of 5% is that index set by the state, there is no intention of the board to seek an exception, so it will not be greater than 5%. And I also wanted to mention 1016, the letter of engagement, that enables us to work with our potential firm Spizel Group for professional design services to finish out some of the areas in Sun Valley High School with interior graphics that will be spirit related, thematic, and uh, in line with uh, the tone and looks that we want inside our schools. And the supplemental staffing agreement enables us to continue to have the additional nursing services uh, that we need uh, when we don't have enough nurses in our district. Thank you for the background on those items. Do I have this motion? Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We'll go to 
go back to 10.10 uh, to residency disqualification disenrollment. Motion is to disenroll student 55256 failing to meet the Pendelco School District residency requirements per education and as presented. We'll have this motion. Second. Questions or comments? Mr. President, uh, <clears throat> since this is a motion that was based on a hearing that was held, uh, Mr. Zeblin will need to take a roll call vote and vote and add twice and ask a question uh, eat on the first go round and then the vote the second time. Uh, the, the question is, uh, was the board member present or have they reviewed the uh, transcript and are prepared to vote? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, the first time I'll go through is that you, you were present or, or read the transcript. Mrs. Ellis? I was not present, but I did read the transcript. Yes. Mrs. Esler? I read the transcripts. Mrs. Jones? Not present, but read. Mr. Mancinella? Yes. Mr. Cezak? Yes. Mr. Tinsley? Mr. Arm. Yes, Mr. Arm. Those board members can vote. Uh, Mrs. Ellis. Yes. Mrs. Esler. Yes. Mrs. Jones. Yes. Mr. Mancinelli. Yes. Mr. Cezak. Yes. Mr. Tinsley. Yes. Mr. Arm. Yes. Carry 7 0. Thank you. Uh, 10.15. Uh, motions to appoint Dr. George Steinhoff as the superintendent of Pendleton School District for a five year term pursuant to the proposed contract effectively July 1st, 2023. Last motion. Second. Questions or comments? Mr. Hello. President. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. President, uh, the school code 10 1073 requires that notice was provided to the school board members that the that the contract was going to be on the agenda this evening. Uh, as I had uh, spoken with school board members previously, uh, they had indicated that everyone had noticed, so it would be appropriate uh, for the board to vote this evening. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I'm also going to add a motion 10.19. Uh, motion is to approve the superintendent to the authority to work with disenrolled families to complete the current school year. Any questions or comments? Any questions? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Now we're back to comments by members of the public. Is that my turn? Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> button and it'll light up light up red. Can you hear me? No. There it is. Okay. All right. Well, thank you everyone for everything that you do for our school. Um, I just wanted to talk on behalf of the full day kindergarten. I am a parent that lives on Bunting Lane and um, I just want everybody to consider, and I know that you know this, but our <coughs> incoming kindergartners were three. My name is Tommy Ellis. I'm the head wrestling coach. I live at 706 Marshall Road. Uh, standing next to me is Jameson Strickland. Uh, literally the inspiration why we brought um, the proposal to bring girls wrestling to Sun Valley as a sanctioned sport for Pennsylvania. Uh, Pennsylvania is the number one leading state in all of the country in boys wrestling um, and soon to be, we hope that it will be uh, sanctioned and improved with girls wrestling. They were uh, the minimum number of schools required was 100, and if I believe tonight will be number 95. So thank you very much. Um, really appreciate what you're doing. I coached Jameson ever since she was about six years old, and uh, 
I really, really just want to say thank you uh, for helping her dreams um, come true so far. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to add that uh, you know, currently um, females are, are wrestling in the male sport. Um, unfortunately, they don't have the possibility to go to wrestle at state. Um, there is no sanctioned wrestling for girls. So although they can wrestle throughout the year, they don't have the opportunity to go into those playoffs per se. So this will give it the opportunity. It is a growing sport in the female um, genre. And we, you know, I'd love to support it in, in every aspect we can. So hopefully we keep the interest that we currently have. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments? Right. Comments by members of the board? Um, I'd just like to say thank you for all you do, Dr. Sano, for the district. Sometimes we may not uh, see eye to eye or have different opinions or views on what we're going to spend money on or do. But, <laughs> Um, you always seem to keep us grounded and out of the super limelight spotlight. And, um, that's what it's all about for the kids and, and operating a district with, as you saw earlier, everyone that out there uh, struggle with budgetary needs and, and everybody sitting at this table that is a board member pays taxes and nobody wants to pay more, but it's, it's just part of being able to have a good school district for our kids to grow up in. So, thank you. <coughs> what I have thought about over the last week. At our study session last week, I was questioned as to how long I've been on the board due to the fact that I brought attention to an issue that deserved more attention. I felt my motives were being challenged and would like to take this opportunity to clear my motive, clarify my motives as a board director for the past 12 years. Over the past three years, my attention has turned to educa how education has changed, sometimes called Reimagine Education 2025. As if lockdown of COVID didn't do enough <coughs> harm, I'm very concerned that our district curriculum and the school culture is being immersed in DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, and social and emotional learning. I admit that in the past, I may have been naive but this was a wake up call for me. I am grateful that the adult and other content in some of the library books will finally be acknowledged and addressed by the board. I'm a great believer in transparency, consistency, and clarity. And while I have the opportunity, I would like to address a few more <clears throat> issues. First, I would like to address what kind of posters, displays, and welcome signs are appropriate for display in the halls and classrooms. I believe they should be generic representing all students rather than a specific group. One suggestion I would like to make is that the signs printed to welcome kids into the classroom would have the background of an American flag or a happy face. All kids can identify and relate, relate to these symbols as inclusive, not exclusive. Secondly, I want to address, and this is my last point, and another important issue. And while I understand the complexity of those it impacts, identity designation, designations in our restrooms and other facilities. Whether we turn a blind eye or have a policy in place, we have changed the definition of biological boys and girls to gender identity for our public facilities. Parents and students should be advised that in the past when a child entered a bathroom or changing area, it was taken for granted that it was the same biological sex, but that has changed. And since I am not convinced that we have not made the change clear enough, I would like to make two suggestions. <clears throat> Number one, I would like to update the signs to read female gender and male gender. Secondly, I would like to, se to send a letter to the parents to ex so they can help explain this to their children and be kind to others as they're entering those facilities. In closing, I hope most of you know how committed I am and have always been to the district. And I appreciate the opportunity to clarify my motivations for the rest of you. Thank you again.
Any other comments by members of the board? I'd just like to thank uh, Coach Ellis for all that he's done year after year, and we're very, very lucky to have him. And I want to uh, thank the board uh, for the confidence in me and the, uh, the renewal of my employment agreement. Um, Mr. Roberts, I've been here for some time, and I have, uh, and I, I love the job, and I love this community, the, the communities that we serve. Uh, my job is easy with the staff that we have in place. It's easier with the staff that we have in place. And the support that we get when we bring really good names forward uh, to hire and to bring them in to work in our district uh, means a lot. Uh, I think we've got the best district in the county. Uh, I think our uh, students at Sun Valley, students at the middle school, students in the elementary school, they're just the greatest kids to have in our buildings. They come from great families and we have a wonderful school community. So it's really my honor uh, to lead a district and I appreciate your confidence. Thank you. Um, if you want to, Coach Tom, you can sit in the same seat. So whether it's March or April, we expect you to come back after Hershey. Well, that's, 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 good that's, news. that's the plan. Uh, you know, there's only been one other Delaware County team that ever made the team state duels, and, and they were never ranked second in the, in the region that we are. So we plan on being here with a full team. We expect the ladies team to be here as well next yes. year. Yes. <laughs> next start next year, they will. <laughs> All right, uh, future meetings are Wednesday, February 15th, will be our study session here at the Service Center at 7.30. Um, that is subject to change. We had talked to uh, maybe moving it outside of this room to different schools so we could see them, um, see what they're about, see what's on the going on, and uh, maybe move around every other month to see each different school. So uh, that's all subject to uh, notification. We'll make, uh, we'll make a decision on that location uh, within this next week. We'll make sure it's properly advertised and the board will be aware as well. So yeah, we definitely support taking the show on the road and we're happy to have you in our building. So for sure. When we were talking about the road show, we were talking about the <coughs> sessions. Correct. That's what I said. I know for, for, for Miss Lisa, I know it would be torture, but we'll Absolutely. so we'll stay here for the regular. It's the road show will be for studies. Um, and the business meeting will be here February 22nd at 7.30 any foul weather. Motion for adjournment? So moved.